Now, did we get the actual service area? Let's see. We started on the, or the arc length, not service area. So we did a G of Y. Now I just need to find G prime of Y. So I'm gonna get a little extra space here. All right, so there's G of Y. Now we're gonna find G prime of Y. So that'll be three y to the one half, and one plus g prime squared. So that's one plus three square root y squared, which is one plus nine y. Yeah. Uh, we were in the middle of this. This is our original problem, our length of this curve, top of the board. It should be the last thing in your notes, unless you wrote some homework stuff no, in no, there. No, the last thing. I just, my, I don't know, for some reason, my numbers in the bottom are different. So I first tried to do an x, uh, set it up with an x integral, and our integral was really ugly. Now, <clears throat> that's not to say we can't integrate this. There's, there's probably a way to integrate it. It just looks ugly and scary, so I'm trying to avoid that integral. It's probably possible to do, I just don't feel like doing it. All right, so there is one plus g prime squared. And we'll fill that in here. All right, how would we integrate this? Like this? Uh, yeah. No, you would never do that. Freshman's dream. I don't think algebra is going to save us. What calculus tools can you use? So trig sub's not great here. Trig sub would be perfect if this was 9y squared. A u sub. A u sub. What is a good choice for you? 1 plus 9y. So du equals 9dy, et cetera, et cetera. So it just turns into basically square root u. There'll be extra 1 ninth in there. So that'll be an easy u sub. So we're going to look at arc length slightly differently now. So the arc length problems are really straightforward. You just know your curve. You sometimes have to switch it into a curve of y instead of a curve of x. And it should be pretty clear what your endpoints are. Uh, it's generally easier and faster than finding volumes. So now we're going to look at the differential formula for arc length. So we'll start out with the same conditions. So suppose y equals f of x. Uh, and f prime x. So suppose these are continuous. And I suppose they're continuous on the interval a, b. By the fundamental theorem of calculus, this function I'm going to create, s sub x, which is the integral from a to x, uh, square root 1 plus f prime t squared dt is continuous. Now this is a part of the fundamental theorem we never really used. 
but it basically says the integral of a continuous uh, <clears throat> the integral of a continuous function is continuous. That's what we're using here. Uh, is continuous and differentiable. And it measures the length along the curve. from one point to another. Now these two points are kind of tricky to see. What is the initial point, both the x and the y value? So the initial point, so a will be the x coordinate. What is the y coordinate? f of a. What is the final coordinate? No, there's no b here x and what's the y coordinate? f of x. So it's going to go from some constant point to some other point. Basically, yeah. And s of x is the arc length function. I'm going to restart one note, but what I want you to do right now is take the derivative of the s function. So s is right there on the board. What theorem do you have to use to take the derivative of s? Fundamental theorem of calculus. You're taking the derivative of an integral. Don't they cancel out? They basically cancel out. So go ahead and write what they cancel out to. All right, so this is uh, derivative of s of x right here. Uh, you could write this as ds over dx. And of course, f prime, you can write that as dy over dx. Uh, fractions suck, so I'm going to do some algebra on this differential form. So I'm going to multiply both sides by dx. So as long as we treat both sides the same. So we get ds equals dx times 1 plus. Now I'm going to go ahead and square the dy and the dx. The reason I don't need extra parentheses, you don't need to use these purple parentheses because dy and dx are one, treat as one unit. Just like if you had cosine squared, you don't write cosine all in uh, parentheses squared. So it works kind of like that. Now I'm going to distribute the dx into the square root. And of course, if I want to do that, I better write it as dx square root squared. And now I can go ahead and distribute in. So we get square root dx squared plus dx squared over dx squared cancels, and we get dy squared. So I square rooted and squared the dx so that I could it'd be both, they're both raised to the one half power. So then I can push the uh, basically the dx into the square root. You can avoid that, just jump right, you could skip this entire second step right there and just run to that last one. As long as you know dx goes in as dx squared. All 
All right, so we're going to redo one of our examples, and I want to know what is the s of x function. So our function was x cubed over 12 plus 1 over x. starting at 1 comma 13 twelfths. And of course, this is a comma f of a. So I'm giving you the starting point, And I want to know what is s of x. So you have the definition of s of x. I'll put a box around it. So that right there is s of x. So write that down. I want you to find this s of x. What was the point of finding the ds just Oh, what's the point of doing this, what we're doing right now? No, like the, we just found ds equals like d or ds squared. Uh, it's a different way to think about s prime, basically, by the change in x and the change in y and the Pythagorean theorem, basically. Should that t be an x or t? I think all the letters here are correct. <clears throat> so what's the difference between this and just regular arc length? So what this, the advantage this has is you don't have to specify an end point. It can be a variable. So it can end wherever, uh, for example, we can go from one to our original example, we went one to four. I could let x equal four and this would tell me the distance from one to four where I could pick any other x value, go 1 to 3, 1 to 5, whatever number I want, I can put in here and get that arc length. So this lets me do all the work up front and then compute it for different x values afterwards. So let's say, let's say I wanted the path to be 100 units long, I could figure out what x value that curve would end on by setting x of s of x equal to 100. I can solve for x. Okay, so it lets me change how far to go on the arc length instead of just picking uh, my endpoint right away. All right, so go ahead, use this s of x. Now the easy part, you can just write down f of t is the exact same f function. You just have t cubed over 12 plus 1 over t. So the first thing you need is f prime of t and then 1 plus f prime t, oops, just the f prime part squared. So go ahead and find those two parts, go ahead and then plug it into the s of x function.
What rookie mistake did I just make? No, well, the square root cancels the square. What calculus mistake did I make? It's so obvious, it's hard to see. No, so our a, I think our A is 1 in this problem. Yup, can't add one correctly. Common mistake. Of course, that makes it, let's see, you're gonna divide by negative one, so I think it just makes it a minus four. Yup, <coughs> that looks good. So we got x cubed over three minus four over x minus a so fourth times one third minus four whatever number this is. All right, so here is our length. If we traveled across the curve from zero to whatever x that you want. Obviously, x equals zero is not gonna work out so well. Going from uh, the original a value of one across zero is not gonna work. So if you go across the vertical asymptote that you can see, that's not gonna work out so nicely. Uh, our original problem that we looked at before so S of four is the arc length from A to four, and we can plug in four pretty easily. S of four, that's a fourth times four cubed over three minus four over four, which is one plus 11 twelfths, so whatever number this is. It's a lot of fours. 64 thirds minus 3 thirds so there'll be 61 twelfths plus 11 twelfths is 72 twelfths Thirty-six six equals 6 alright this should be the exact same thing we got from our Example earlier, I'm going to scroll up really quickly to find that one. Oh, we never worked this out all the way. Here was that original problem we did. I did fractions a little differently this time around, so you can see it worked out in a different form. Uh, let's go ahead and figure out what number this is. It better be 6. So 4 cubed over 12, that's 64 twelfths minus some more twelfths. One fourth, that's four, no, three twelfths. Minus one twelfth minus twelve twelfths. Eleven, negative eleven twelfths. All right, sixty four minus three is sixty one plus eleven. It would give us our 72 twelfths, which is 6. So if we finished working it out, we would have gotten a 6. The <clears throat> big advantage we have by computing arc length in a differential form is that I don't have to initially choose my endpoint. I can choose whatever x value I want. Um, there was one important line in here that I wrote down but didn't really go over. So continuous. So both f and f prime need to be continuous. Let's look at our example. Is f of t continuous for all t values? 
what t-value is this really not continuous for? Zero. zero. So if you cross zero, this arc length uh, won't work. So if you're using zero or anything negative for t, that's not going to work so well with this function. All right. So you got to make sure your function is continuous. So you can apply the above uh, basically as long as we already write our final version of s of x. Here we go. So this works when, in this case, x is greater than 0. So it's not going to work if x is 0 or negative. So here's our final answer for s of x. All right, any last questions? Yep, no problem.